P.S. Milani is going to be one of the best upcoming Hydro DPS in game, and we'll cover pretty much everything about her, and we'll even cover how she performs compared to some other Hydro units in game. And before that, since Natlon is releasing and if you're planning to buy Welkins or other packs, you can save tons of money doing that on Loot Bar. Loot Bar offers Primo gems for a much cheaper price than the in-game shop and is used by lots of players worldwide with lots of good reviews. All you have to do is click the link in the description, it'll open the website, then just select the pack you want, then enter your server and UID and you're done. Your items arrive in less than a minute. Also, newcomers get a 5% discount, so use the link and don't miss out. Understanding the mechanics of one of the most important things in her kit, which is her skill, goes something like this. So when you use her skill, firstly, you'll get to surf a shark. Now, this is just the Night Soul Blessing mechanic. I have explained this mechanic in another video, and we can discuss that later in the video. So going into detail, after using your skill, she'll gain 60 Night Soul points, and this is basically just stamina points, and a good example of this is Wanderer's alternate stamina that you get after using his skill. These Night Soul points are used by Milani while she's using her skill and surfing, and when they're used up, the skill will end. You can also end it by just clicking the skill again. Now this is not all and just part of her skill. Now the next part is where all her damage comes from, so after you use her skill and are surfing, her normal attacks will be converted into something called the Shark's Bite, dealing Hydro damage based on Milani's max HP, and damage dealt this way is considered normal attack damage. Now there's more to it. So when she touches an enemy while surfing, Milani marks them as prey and gains one stack of wave momentum, and you can have a maximum of three stacks of wave momentum. These wave momentum stacks help you to increase your damage by a lot, and to understand how they do it, let's go back a bit. Remember when we talked about something called a shark's bite? It happens when you use your normal attacks while surfing. So these wave momentum stacks will help you buff the shark's bite damage, and for every stack you have, the shark's bite damage will increase by 7.81% of her max HP. And if you have 3 stacks, she'll use a special move called Surging Bite. It'll use all the stacks at once and deal massive damage, as the multiplier is 39% of her max HP. Now along these, there's a small mechanic in her skill too. So when a shark's bite hits opponents marked as prey, that mark will be removed, and she will fire shark missiles at up to 5 nearby opponents who are also marked as prey. But the catch is that the more opponents you target, the more the missile damage decreases, with the maximum damage decrease being 28% when 3 enemies are targeted. As for the damage, it'll be the same as shark's bite damage. Now, seeing the thing that deals the most damage in her entire kit, which is her burst. Her burst is rather simple. When you use it, she'll fire a super shark missile dealing AoE hydro damage to enemies based on Milani's max HP. Here's the multiplier. The cooldown is going to be 15 seconds, and the energy cost is going to be 60 energy. Looking at her passives, in her first passive, after you use the surging bite on an opponent, she'll create a puffer fish nearby, and picking it up will restore 20 night soul points. In her second passive, when a party member triggers Night Soul Burst, Milani gains a stack of Wave Chasers, and its purpose is to boost her burst's damage. So every single Wave Chaser stack lasts for 20 seconds, and you can have a maximum of 3 stacks, and when you use her burst after gaining these stacks, the burst damage will be increased according to how many stacks you had. In her third passive, when her Night Soul points are depleted, she'll switch to consuming something called Phlogiston to maintain her skill. So when your actual Night Soul stamina runs out, you can just switch to consuming Phlogiston. What this is, is it's a small bar right above your HP bar, so when your actual Night Soul stamina runs out, you can just switch to consuming Phlogiston. As for gaining Phlogiston, you probably need to interact with some harvestable items, and it'll refill your Phlogiston bar. Think about it as your emergency reserve stamina. Additionally, it also says that in areas with the Phlogiston mechanics, when your active character is sprinting, swimming, or at a certain height in air and you switch to Milani, she will enter her skill mode and gain 40 night soul points. It kinda saves you some time by instantly activating her skill when you switch. Finally, in her last passive talent, resources unique to Natlon will appear on your mini-map, and while inside areas with Phlogiston mechanics, 15 Phlogiston will be restored when interacting with some harvestable items. Now if you want to increase her damage and double or even triple it, that is where her constellations would come in. To understand her C1, let's go back a bit again. Remember when we talked about something called the Surging Bite and Shark Missiles? 
Surging bites are triggered after gaining three wave momentum stacks, and shark missiles are triggered after you hit an enemy who's marked as prey with a shark's bite. Now what C1 does is it increases the damage dealt by both surging bite and shark missiles by 66% of her HP. Now this can only trigger once per skill use. For reference, if your Milani has like 40,000 max HP, that's easily a damage increase of 27,000. Along with these, she will consume 30% less Night Soul and Phlogiston points, so you can surf way longer and deal more damage. Going to her C2, after using her skill, she instantly gains two stacks of wave momentum, and she also gains another stack when she picks up a puffer fish. In addition to this, when Milani obtains two puffer fish within a single instance of skill, meaning without using her skill again, she'll gain 12 night soul points over two seconds. Her C3 will only increase her skill level by three. Her C4 will help her regenerate 8 energy when she picks up a pufferfish, and additionally, her burst deals 75% increased damage. Her C5 increases her burst level by 3. Finally, for her C6, the description is tiny, but the damage increase it brings is very huge. It states that the damage bonus given to the first surging bite by her C1 is no longer limited to only the first surging bite, meaning that every single surging bite you perform now will have its damage increased by 66% permanently. Now all of her constellations look excellent, and none of them are even slightly bad, so the more you invest in her, the higher her damage goes, but still, since primo gems are something we are all broke on, the best constellation I'd recommend stopping on is C1, as the damage boost it gives is huge, and maybe C2, if you have some extra primos laying around. Now moving on to the thing that is very crucial to her kit, her weapons. Let's start by looking at her signature itself. It's called Surfing Time, and it's a catalyst, as Milani is a catalyst user. Moving on the weapon gives a good amount of crit damage as its substat at level 90. As for its passive, the thing increases the max HP by 20%, and along with this, if you use your active character's elemental skill, the weapon will give your character 4 stacks of Scorching Summer effect, which lasts for 14 seconds. The point of these stacks is that if a normal attack lands on an enemy, it'll consume one stack, and your normal attack's damage will be increased by 12%. You can only use a stack once every 1.5 seconds, so spamming it isn't possible. Also, if you're triggering vaporized reactions with the equipping character, then instead of consuming a stack, it'll add one back to the total. Also, here are the values at different refinement levels. Looking at some good alternate options for her, firstly, we got the Tome of Eternal Flow, which is Novelette's signature weapon. It can be pretty good for her because it increases the character's HP and gives crit damage. Secondly, Rysalee's signature weapon, Cash Flow, can also be pretty good in certain situations, such as while pairing her up with me, as my skill constantly drains HP, it'll lead to the weapon's passive triggering. Another good weapon I'd like to mention is Kokomi's signature weapon, Everlasting Moon Glow, as it gives a good chunk of HP percentage and also increases normal attack damage based on your max HP, along with some ER. So if you have any of the above mentioned weapons, I'd say you're good enough and don't really need to go for her signature. Now there's a not so free to play 4 star weapon, and no, it's not the Widsith, it's the Sacrificial Jade. Now this is a weapon that you can obtain from the battle pass, and this weapon gives an excellent amount of HP and crit rate percentage, and it just keeps getting better with refinement. If you have this thing or 5, once again you can survive without her signature. Besides this, there's another weapon that you can obtain from the Natlin's main event, and it's called the Ashgraven Drinking Horn, the substats are HP percentage, and in its passive, when you hit an enemy, it'll deal 40% of the active character's HP as AoE damage. Now going to the free-to-play options for her, there's a new upcoming craftable weapon called the Ring of Saba. This gives a HP percentage in its substat, and its passive increases your normal attack damage by 0.6% for every 1000 max HP you have, and has a maximum damage increase of 16%. So, to fully utilize this passive, you need to have 27,000 max HP. Other than this, there's also Prototype Amber. It gives a good amount of HP and ER, so it's not too bad. Moving on to the last thing her kit needs to be fully complete. Take a guess? Yes, artifacts. The Obsidian Codex is going to be her best in slot artifact. Due to the buff this thing provides, it's just insane. It's just 40% crit rate plus 15% increased damage on every single attack she does. Now as for the main stats, you can go with either HP or EM on Sans, whichever one has better substats. And yes, EM does work out for her as she's going to do vapes or other reactions. 
As for the goblet, you want to go with the hydro damage bonus and finally either crit rate or crit damage on circlet. As for the substats, try having HP and HP percentage along with energy recharge and elemental mastery. Now if you don't want to go through the pain of farming a new artifact set for her, you could also use some old sets, such as Unfinished Reverie, and run her with Emily if you have her. Or alternatively you could go for Marichasi Hunter and run her with me. If you don't have either, you could run her with 2-piece for Kasha's Glow and 2-piece Nim's Dream. Now these 2-piece sets are by no means as good as her best in slot, but they work and are better than leaving her empty. <laughs> Looking at her team comps, firstly, you could go with a vaporized team, including Milani herself. As for the second character, either Xiaoling, Dea, or Toma. And for the third character, use an Emo. And for the third character, use an Anemo character with the Viridescent Veneer, as it'll reduce the enemy's elemental resistance. It's pretty good for damage buffing. As for the character itself, you can pretty much use any Anemo with Viridescent, but still, Kazuha and Sucrose would be preferred. As for the last slot, it's honestly up to you to either go with Hydro Resonance and equip another Hydro character, or maybe go with a Shielder for Interruption Resistance, or maybe a Dendro for Bloom Reactions, or take a buffer with you, such as Yunjin, to buff Milani's normal attacks. Secondly, you can also go with a Vape Burn team, so you'll have Milani as your main DPS. In the second slot, you can again have anyone such as Xiaoling, Dea, or Toma. In the third slot, you'd want to have a Dendro character such as Emily or Nahida. Preferably Emily as her entire kit revolves around burning. And for the last character, you could either go with a Shielder for damage resistance or go with a healer such as Barbara, Siegewin, or maybe myself. Now, her kit allows her to deal some insane hydro damage based on her HP alone. However, her effectiveness depends on how you manage her resources, such as Night Soul points. Her constellations, especially C1, significantly boost her damage, making her even more powerful. As for flaws in her kit, there's really no flaw other than her playstyle, which may be difficult for some players to get used to. Now comparing her to someone like Novalette, Novalette is easy to use, he has flexibility, and has strong damage potential in a variety of scenarios. While Milani on the other hand, though potentially stronger in some situations, has more specific team requirements and can be harder to play effectively due to her need to stay close to enemies and her somewhat slow attack speed. Personally both of them are really good, and there's no point comparing them, just enjoy the character, because it's not like Genshin has reached a stage where if you don't have the best of the best DPS you'd get destroyed. Now, is she worth pulling? She is definitely 100% worth pulling, and you cannot go wrong by pulling for her unless you lose the 50-50, that is.